everybody. It's Professor McDonald here. We're going to be talking about levels of measurement in this section of the lesson. There were two previous videos that you should watch before this one. So let's get into the new information to be built upon the previous information we learned. Now that we know the difference between qualitative and quantitative data, and with quantitative data, we know the difference between discrete and continuous, we're going to take it a step further and talk about levels of measurement for each type. With qualitative data, we have two levels, nominal, which is identification only, such as social security numbers, type of car, hair color, and ordinal is the second level of measurement for qualitative data where categories can be put into a meaningful order, such as choices like never, sometimes, always, or low, medium, high. The levels of quantitative data are interval, where values have no natural zero, such as temperatures. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, we do have zero degrees Fahrenheit, for example. Yes, but that is not an absence of temperature. Natural zero means that you actually have no quantity of the substance or, or characteristic. And we can go below zero with temperatures, right? There's always some temperature there, even if we're on this scale that we've made uh, for knowing what the temperature means. Then we also have ratio level for quantitative data. These are values which do have a natural zero and that makes the ratios meaningful and that's why it's called ratio. Weights and heights are good examples of ratio data. And I always remember because there's an O on the end, that looks like a zero, that's how I remember which one has the natural zero. Now we can try an example or several examples to see if we can apply the knowledge we've learned from the past few lessons, including this one. Determine the correct type of data, quantitative or qualitative, indicate whether data are continuous or discrete, if they're quantitative. Also, note the level of measurement. Hint, data that are discrete often start with the words, the number of. Yes, that's because discrete data are from a counting process. So here we have the number of pairs of shoes you own. Remember that you can pause the video after I show each example and before I give the answer so that you can try practicing to see if you understand this on your own before I explain it. Now the number of pairs of shoes you own would come from counting each pair of shoes. So this would be quantitative, a quantity that is a actual amount of shoes, and it would be discrete because it comes from a counting process, now, what would the level be? Remember, with quantitative data, we could choose interval, which has no natural zero, or ratio, which has a natural zero. So can we have no pairs of shoes? Technically, yes. So this would be quantitative discrete, and we might also say that it's ratio. The type of car you drive. Well, this is not a quantity, obviously because you're asking the question, what type of car do you drive? And the types of answers you could get would be types of cars that are words. And there's no way to put them in any kind of natural order, so this would be qualitative nominal. Where you go on vacation. Again, this is something that will have answers that are words with no ordinal meaning. So that would again be qualitative nominal. The distance it is from your home to the nearest grocery store. Hmm. Well, I know a distance would be a quantity, so it's quantitative. I also know that I would have to measure the distance, so that would make it continuous. Now, is it interval or ratio? Can I have zero distance? Well, I guess if your home were actually the grocery store, it would be zero distance. So technically, yes, we can always have a zero amount of distance. So this would be quantitative continuous ratio. 
the number of classes you take per school year. Again, we see the word or the phrase the number of, which means we're counting. So it's discrete data, quantitative, discrete, and ratio. The tuition for your classes. Now imagine what the answers would be, the data. They would be probably thousands of dollars, maybe hundreds of dollars, and that would be something that you count, a number of dollars or a number of hundreds of dollars or a number of thousands of dollars. So this would be quantitative, discrete, and ratio. Of course, we have a natural zero. You could technically have zero tuition for your classes. The type of calculator you use. Well, the type is just going to be a word that has no ordinal meaning. So we say qualitative nominal. Now you can remember what nominal means. If you are familiar with the Spanish word for name is nombre. And the beginning here, the prefix on this word is nom, nom, which means name in Latin. So remember, nominal data is only titles or ID, IDs, something that is just for identification purposes. What about movie ratings? Movie ratings are one of the things that we consider a rank. If you have movie, movie ratings that are a number of stars, they are still not actual quantities that have meaning when you take the average in general. In general, we say that ranks are nominal and ordinal. I meant to say qualitative ordinal. Now, there may be a case where someone is doing a study that involves comparing actors and actresses according to the ratings of the movies they've appeared in. In that way, you could treat ratings as quantitative data. So with statistics, there are sometimes exceptions to the rule based on how you want to design a study or a hypothesis question, etc. There are always possible exceptions that you could argue, but in general, ranks are considered qualitative ordinal. Political party preferences. Now, I could put the political parties in order according to my opinion, but technically, there is no proper order, so this would be nominal and, of course, qualitative. Weights of sumo wrestlers. Weights are quantities. They are on a continuous scale because you would measure weights with a scale. And you can have a natural zero absence of weight. So this would be quantitative continuous ratio. Amount of money in dollars won playing poker. Here, we would be counting quantities in dollars. And we could technically have won zero dollars. So this would be quantitative discrete ratio. The number of correct answers on a quiz. We're counting correct answers. So it would be quantitative discrete and you could have zero correct answers. So it is ratio. People's attitudes toward the government. Now this is a good one. Now if you can imagine being a researcher who wants to analyze the attitudes of people toward the government. If you just go up to someone and ask them, what's your attitude toward the government? You're going to get varied and probably very passionate responses that would probably get you into a rabbit hole every single time you ask the question, right? So a smart researcher will create options. So instead of just asking, what is your attitude and leaving it open, you could say, would you say that your attitude toward the government is very dissatisfied, dissatisfied, neutral, satisfied, or very satisfied? And that would be qualitative 
ordinal. Temperatures of cups of coffee at different restaurants. Well, they are quantities that are measured, so it's continuous and quantitative. And since there is no natural zero, you could have you could never have a cup of coffee that had zero amount of temperature. There's always going to be some temperature present. So that is quantitative, continuous, and interval. All right, so that concludes 